We all know that the UK is a central hub for motorsport manufacturing. We've taken a trip today to Coventry to Whiteley Brooks Engineering and we're going to meet with Joe Reynolds who's going to tell us why the Engineering Technology Group is his preferred supplier and why he buys Hardinge Bridgeport machine tools. So Joe, can you tell us a little bit about Whiteley Brooks? Right, it was uh, formed in 1965 by Ken Whiteley and Stan Brooks and they, they built up on the business, started with just a couple of lathes um, we moved here to this premises, I believe, in 1972, and I joined the company in 1984. Which at the time was just one unit? One unit, that's the, the, the unit we're, we're in at the moment. Um, about 12 years ago, we bought the unit next door, uh, it became available, had some alterations done in there, and we built our quality control um, department in the link between the two buildings and then just over two years ago we bought the building the other side of the factory so we now op occupy three business units. And in terms of CNC machine tools how many machine tools do you have or CNC machines within that within those three units? We've got 23 hard inch bridge port machine tools um, all CNC We've got, I think, 12 lathes, and we've also got one Mazak 5-axis machine. And in terms of the CNC machine tools that you've got here, um, what, what sort of parts of their machine, what industries are you serving? Our main business is motorsport, and of that, most of it is Formula One motor racing. Um, we also do a little bit of work for the diesel test industry and a small amount of work for the MOD. I mean, the, the Formula One one's an interesting uh, indus industry in itself. It's ever-changing, uh, very quick pace. Do, do you notice a lot of changes in processes and, and component manufacturing in recent years? Yes, it's, it's very much an evolution. So what we were making 20-odd years ago is a lot different today, but it's been a gradual evolution throughout the years. Um, this year has been seen a big change because of the introduction of the turbocharged engines. So th parts have had to get a little bit stronger. There's a bit more torque going through them. So you, is, that, is that done by using different materials? Uh, different materials and also actually just making the parts bigger and stronger, heavier. And so when you take on the new types of materials or the new parts, obviously you have to consider the machine tools that you're machining those components on. You mentioned Hardinge Bridgeport. How do the machines fare with the different types of materials and the different components? We've had no problems with Hardinge Bridgeport on this. Uh, they are um, a very similar machine tool to, to what other people manufacture, but we've, we've got a, a long record of working with Hardinge Bridgeport. We've thrown virtually every material at it, from titaniums through to the very the new stainless steels, the PH7s, which are very tough materials, and they always seem to cope, so we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't think of changing away from that. And they're obviously locally based, and, and now you buy Hardinge Bridgeport through the Engineering Technology Group. Have you seen any differences in service, support, since that transition? No, no, we've always had good service and support from Hardinge Bridgeport. It was one of the main reasons we started with them um, in 1983, I think, was the first one we bought. They're a local company. They were in Leicester. They're now in Southam, which is nearer. We've always had good support, and uh, we've always had a good service from them. And they do sell five-axis machines, but you've got three-axis machines with two-axis tables on them. Just I'm just interested in why you would opt for a three-axis machine with a two-axis table rather than maybe a full simultaneous five-axis machine. Uh, versatility, really. The type of product we make is relatively small. We don't use, we don't make products that require cranes or lifting gear to get them on the machine. We specialize in relatively small parts and because the Formula One in particular is an ever-changing market, we need to be able to change the programs, change the fixturing very, very quickly and the putting the retrofitted five-axis tables on is a better solution for us. I suppose a good thing is you can use the machine as a three-axis machine by taking the two-axis rotary table off and then if you do introduce five-axis parts you can quickly put the two-axis table back onto the machine. Um, it gives you that flexibility. Yes, we do do that quite often and we can also put a, a simple rotary axis on to make it a four-axis. 
what we tend to do is the five axis, the retrofitted five axis can go on one end of a bedway and we can actually do three axis work on the other end without taking it off. We can just put small fixtures on one end and actually have two jobs running on the machine at the same time, a five axis part and a, a standard three axis part. And so if you were to have a requirement today for another machining centre, who would you call? I would call uh, Engineering Technology Group. Um, we always have, and they, they, were, they have always been our first port of call when we're looking for a new machine. So what's your most recent investment? Um, our most recent investment were the three new Hardinge Bridgeport, um, I think they're BMC 1000s in the new shop, and the, the Doosan lathe, which is also in the new shop. So from walking around um, the, the latest uh, facility, Unit 3, as you call it, your plans are to fill this uh, with machines for the rest of the... Yes, yeah, we, we hope to expand into it over the next few years. Um, we tend to expand relatively slowly, um, but we have a, a new lathe coming in later on in the year and hopefully new mills in the early part of next year. So manufacturing in general, Joe, What's your thoughts on, on, on the year ahead? Um, it's looking very good for us um, and most of our peers as well. We, we seem to get the impression that most engineering companies like us are quite busy at the moment. Um, not just in motorsport but in aerospace as well. There, there's definitely a shortage of engineering companies or good engineering companies out there. And you've got, how many CNC machinists have you got here? How many do you employ? We've got 31 people working here at the moment, including the management team. Um, so I would say there's about 24 CNC machinists. And is it difficult to find skilled engineers in the local area? It's very difficult to find skilled engineers, generally. Individually then, Joe, when you're looking at new technologies, um, what sort of, what, how do you go about that? What sort of uh, publications or websites do you use? Uh, we, we use the, the MTD website and the various trade magazines that come through through the post and we visit the exhibitions and shows when we can. So will you be going to MAC 2014? Personally no but we'll send a couple of guys from here we'll be get, definitely be going to MAC to have a look around and see what's available. See what's new and uh, yeah what's available in the industry. So with the new large unit when that is filled with CNC machine tools will you be looking at new markets to, to fill the capacity or just growing the existing? No, we'll be looking at new markets. Um, we've already looked at the medical market. We've, we've looked at the uh, diesel test market, as I said, and we're, we're also looking at the oil market as well, the, uh, the offshore drilling market. We're, we're thinking of attending an exhibition for that later on in the year. So no, we're, we're always open to new markets that fit in with the type of work we do. So, Whiteley Brooks, here to stay, here to grow? Yes, yes, definitely. We see ourselves as a company that will be here right into the future. Um, I say we've been here since 1965. Hopefully we'll be here in 2065. The current family that own the business are very keen for it to grow and we see it as a company for the future.